Hey chatters, welcome back to Obsidian. Today we're going to be talking about how you can use Obsidian for things like project management or just your task lists. This one's kind of important because there are other automations we're going to be building that kind of depend on this, but generally I just want to show you how I use these things. I'm sure you're going to come up with all kinds of other creative ways to do it. So these are all going to be plugins that we're talking about, and there's going to be three plugins in particular that we want to look at. The first is going to be checklist. Already have it installed. You click it, you're going to have something that says installed and then enabled. And this is probably my favorite plugin at the moment. And that's because you can more or less create a to-do list in any note anywhere and it's all going to be centralized in one spot. And so you can check it off either in that note wherever it is or on the sidebar over here. So let's just go in the options just so you can see what it looks like. The important thing that I want you to think about is this tag name. This is going to be how you are marking what is a to-do item. All this other stuff you can play around with, but that's really the main thing. And how this one works is very simple is that whenever you have any sort of markdown checkbox, which all that is, the dash, open bracket, space, close bracket, creates that checkbox, and you can say, go grocery shop. Okay. Now, nothing has showed up here on the side. You'll see here there's this little check mark, which is the to-do list. And that's because if we just quickly go back to here we have the tag name, which I have set as just to do. You can set it as whatever you want. Maybe you're lazy and don't want to type out four letters. You could just do X or whatever, but I just keep it at to do. And all you do is turn it into a tag. So you do hashtag to do, press enter or space and bam, there it is right there in your checklist. And you'll see here, it even marks for you what note it's coming from. Now, this is important because you'll see here, I don't have showing, but here are the tasks that I have for these dates. And you can see there's a couple here that I've had on my list for a little while that I need to catch up with. So this is really important because you can find where this is in the note. And then if I check this off here, it checks it off here or vice versa. You'll see it'll, it should come back. And if I check it off here, it should get rid of it there. That's what checklist is. Next, uh, a very similar app, which I actually don't use too much, but is worth it if you are using this a little bit more for project management. Let's go back to the community plugins and we're going to browse. And this one is going to be tasks. Tasks just gives you a little bit of additional functionality around uh, things that you're doing. Primarily, you can create repeating tasks, you can create due dates for things. It just makes it a lot easier if you're doing more advanced sort of project management or you're trying to keep more organized. If we go to tasks, similar thing here, we have the filter. So I have it just to do, it might be something different from you. I really didn't change any of this stuff, but again, you can do as much or as little uh, as you want here and look through. But typically what's going to happen is if you want to create a task, you can come to the command palette or you have your hotkey, do task, and you can do create or edit a task. And so we already have it here. It's, it's editing it because that's the one that's here. You can do things like set our priority, set the recurring, set the due date. We'll say tomorrow. It automatically does that. You can do a scheduled date, you can do the start date, all kinds of options here. And we do apply and you'll see here that it has added this symbol to show that it is medium priority. It's added the date that we want it due and when it was assigned and you can edit everything here. So, in that. so those are the two options there. Again, I don't really use it uh, that much. I only really use the, the to-do list here. But another thing I just wanted to talk through is Kanban. So for those of you who Trello or whatever, you have your lists and your boards, 
There's also a nice little Kanban plugin. So we'll go to that. Kanban. This one right here. And you'll see it just creates these lists with all your notes or your tasks or whatever you want to do. As in all things, and probably you're starting to get this now, is you can either set this to a hotkey or you bring up your command palette, control P, and we can look up Kanban. You'll see here we have create a new board. So let's do that. Now, this probably looks fairly similar to you. We're going to say task. A list and now we have the list over here then we can add a card we'll say go grocery shopping and it shows up here now this can be simple we can add another so probably if you're using Kanban you want multiple lists so if you want to add more you can go right here to that plus symbol and you say maybe just doing I'll do one more done now we have our three buckets of lists and so you can just move this to here you can move this to here but things can be a little bit more controllable too so for example if we want to edit this card we can either do a new note from card and that's just going to now create us a little note where this is now connected so you can put oh maybe i want eggs cheese uh, bagels Begin for a nice little breakfast for yourself. And then you move this over to doing or whatever. And similarly, let's say that you are maybe trying to split things up in terms of you're creating your media empire. So let's delete this card. And you're writing a blog about LLMs. And so maybe you go here to create a new note from card and you say blog about LLMs, you write your blog or whatever, but you can add more to this. So for example, you can, you can just add blog here and that will let you know that, Hey, this is a blog that I'm working. So let's just get out of here. Click enter and you'll see here it now marks it as a blog just so you can keep that uh, up to date. And then again, you just move it through the process of, of where you're at. Now, before we wrap up, let's just go check out uh, the Kanban options. And so here, again, you just look at this, whatever you want. You can set up templates for whatever notes. So if you have any saved templates for how you want your new Kanbans to be created, a note folder. So if you want to stick those notes that get created in a specific folder, otherwise they're just going to get tossed in whatever folder the Kanban is in. You can create some of the how the width of the list, how many archived cards. You can do a checkbox, create colors, some options, create some date triggers. So you can do the at symbol right now and it'll uh, put in a date for it, uh, similar with the time, how you want the date formatted, time formatted date displayed. There are just lots and lots of options here that you can play with, but honestly, I don't use any of any of these. You can go as deep or as shallow as you want. I primarily use this in how I'm planning content. I just have ideas, production, marketing, schedule, and then I have the date that I want to put it out there, which you can see I'm already way behind. I got to move all these now and where I'm at in production just to help me out with all my personal content. That's it for this video. Next, we're finally going to be hooking up a large language model to our notes. I just wanted to go through this first because at least to me, the checklist in particular, which again, if you just go to your, your sidebar here and you find your checklist, this is one of the most useful things for me because I can put a nice little to do in anywhere in my notes. And it's going to pop up here in an organized way to keep my attention towards it and make sure I don't forget. So as always, thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.